62, they commissioned the first badge. Mm. So, back in the day, they called this Stumptown, and it kind of has retained that name to this day. Well, why did they call it Stumptown? Because I'm very well, sad. We, <laughs> we can read about it right they here. They cleared it. <laughs> Don't lean on that. Town had a population just under a thousand people. Six males, every female. Ninety percent were under twenty years old. The largest settlement in the Pacific Northwest. There were only two buildings taller than one story. General stores, groceries, flour mill, drug shop. All the buildings are made of wood. Few built on campus. Portland was a frontier village, nicknamed both Stumptown and Mudtown. Stumps from fallen firs lay scattered dangerously about front and first streets. Humans and animals, carts and wagons, slogged through a sludge of mud and water. Sidewalk walks often disappeared during flood periods. Still, in 1851, the little town of Portland incorporated Incorporated became the second city in Oregon after Oregon City from 1844. In 1881, police officers must be a citizen able to read and write, resident of Portland for one year, have no criminal record, be of sound mind and body, at least five foot ten inches, and at least 175 pounds. So you can weigh yourself on this scale and see if you can meet the requirements. On April 1, 1908, Lola Baldwin was sworn in to the Portland Police Bureau to perform police service. At the age of 48, she became the first female police officer of Westland, Mississippi, and the second in the nation, four years before she could vote. Lola Baldwin was known for being um, uh, anti-gambling, anti-temperance, anti-dancing. And so um, there's a concert venue here called the Crystal Ballroom, which was open at that time, which she was instrumental in shutting down because they were doing gambling and other nefarious activities in there. But now, when they reopened it in the 90s, they um, named the second floor dance club that used to be a hidden club uh, Lola's Room. <laughs> She would not have liked at all. <laughs> That's a pretty incredible light post. And assorted badges and equipment. <laughs> A lot of 
Interesting hats here. They were 12 to 18 year olds, made arrests of adults and juveniles, reported crimes, and marched in parades mm -hmm. from 1913 to 1916. It didn't last very long. 12 year old cops that were arresting adults? Yeah, I bet it didn't last long. Babe Ruth visited Portland and played an exhibition in October 1924. During his visit, he had his picture taken with several local dignitaries, including Chief Leon Jenkins. The sign ball was given to Ch Chief Jenkins during the visit. Oh, this right here. There's a the picture. Very cool. It's a lamp that was on just one of the two lamps that were on either side of the doors at the second and old police there's the motorcycle police look at that old harley and the tricks that they performed apparently yeah. hey kids don't do this on your motorcycles but look what we can do in 1846, um, they st stopped using the Circle Star badge and they started using the badge that they use presently. And they had a whole bunch of these badges left over. So someone just put them in a bag and threw them in the river. And recently, within the last few years, they someone uncovered that bag full of police badges in the river. It was an interesting way to try and get rid of them. Okay, so I can tell a little bit here now. So we donated my father's auxiliary police uniform, gloves, hat, jackets that had his badges on and like the little patch there. I don't know if any of these are his, but at the time they didn't have anything of the auxiliary police, but apparently someone had made a donation and they received quite a bit of stuff and that apparently this guy here was um, um, captain, so I guess he got first bidding here. My father was a lieutenant in the auxiliary police. But this guy, it looked like, also served with the civil defense program. You see, there's a big sign for the join the Portland Missouri Police. Uh, my dad had one of those signs, and uh, it was kind of from him seeing that that he determined that he wanted to join the police, and I think that was during the. Um, Centennial, the Oregon Centennial, that he's seen that sign because it was uh, shortly after that that, as I recall, that he actually joined the Zoller police. So he must have been impressed about on what they were doing, and he'd like to do that too. Portland Police Highland Guard. Computer assisted dispatch from the 1970s. Jail visiting hours on Sunday only. There's your ball and chain so you don't get away. Sh shut her in, Brie. Or maybe not. <laughs> You're lucky. This floor saved you. No one can hold me in. <laughs> no jail. I can't push the door open and I know. Okay, Miss Door. I won't get away. There you go. The old ball and chain. And this is, I'm guessing, like a SWAT uniform and a um, bomb squad robot. He's going where she belongs. 
and the pokey. It is kind of a Johnny Five. Johnny Five is alive. And here's McGruff the crime dog. <laughs> Who's this? Don't you recognize them? The lava monster. <laughs> the lava monster from Grimm. From Grimm. This is Sergeant Wu's uniform from Grimm. Sergeant Wu right there. Show him. There was that. Oh, more Grimm. I guess it does belong in here. They were cops, Portland police officers, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the books. That's wow. pretty cool. Yeah. So if I know from the trailer. From the trailer first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a beer koozie, Portland Police beer koozie, and lanyards. Portland Police throw blanket, only forty dollars, and some mugs, blankets. Who's that fella? this badge pins oh thank you a little badge pin set it is cute